It was the 22nd of June, 1948. The Thames early morning is not exactly warm. And on that morning, the welcome was a foggy, cold one. For the people who have never been to England before, they were shocked. There were newspaper men all around. They, 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 this was like a field day for them. They were all milling around trying to in interview people who had no time to talk, they were tired and they weren't interested in um, you know, giving any news because they couldn't answer any question because they didn't know what was going on. And the first time in the country, they just was more or less overcome with a certain amount of emotion with straw hats as we all wear in straw hats in, in Jamaica. And um, we're all colorful, um, jazzy shirts, you know. And um, we were, you know, looking all right to come to this country. <laughs> if I remember, it was very foggy, damp and cold. And uh, cause again, we being extra, being RAF personnel, we, we, we came prepared. I had some, um, heavy pullovers in my, in my case. But lots of the chaps who came off were in tropical kit and they were shocking, they were trembling, you know, dreadful, pitiful in, in some respect. And of course, added to the weather, they had no bed to sleep, nowhere to go, virtually. It was for the civilians an apprehension, you know, they, they didn't know what is, go what is going to happen next. They didn't know how far the, the towns that they were going to is from London, and they were just open for the best. They didn't know for a fact that um, there was a reception center set up to, to welcome them. They knew this only perhaps hours before the duct, and they were all milling around wondering what is going to happen, where they're going, where they're going to sleep that night, and et cetera, et cetera. They Minister for the Colonies had organized and sent some authorities on board to try and organize somewhere for about a third of the passengers who had nowhere to go, a third of the immigrant passengers. And eventually they went to the deep shelter at Clopham Common. Now give the English authorities their due. They do not want you to come to England from the colonies but once you were here, they did everything possible to make life reasonable. And the English person in general, if you want to go somewhere, they would go out of their way to help. Even if they did not like it, there's something humane about the British. That is why they had ruled a quarter of the world with a limited amount of force. On board the ship, the servicemen who were going back to their camps were well organized and they carried on. The people who had somewhere to go to with a British passport, they just stepped off and took a train to where, and where they want to go. The people who had nowhere to go to were just dormant. They could not think, they could not act. But luckily, the authorities came to their aid, and it was sorted out. And from that sorting out, we have what we have in England today. I think most of us thought England was an extension of Jamaica. This was the first mistake. You know, you expected things to be as they were at home. You, you friendly people, uh, warmth. Uh, you know, we, had, we had never seen snow. And, of course, uh, things weren't the same. And that's your first shock, of course, when you got to England. Uh, things are different. <laughs>